Hey guys, it's Antis, and we are back in Poke 1. We have made it all the way up here to the Pokemon League, and um, we're not going to be taking on the Elite Four today. Um, as I said, we were going to make a video um, just kind of talking about why I made the choices I made for my team. So that's kind of what we're going to do. First, though, I want to show you this guy. Jesus, this dude is the ugliest dude I've seen in this game. I can't even figure out what these are. I don't think those are arms. They're like, oh, come on, move, dude. Yeah, oh no, they are arms. All right, I was going to say, I thought they were like little nubs. This dude is the freaking ugliest dude. Dang, dude. He got smacked around with an ugly stick. But, <clears throat> that's not all. I wanted to show you the funniest thing. I got to show you the ugliest person in, in Kanto. Now I want to show you the only lonely bathroom in Kanto region. So if you have to use the bathroom and you don't feel like using nature, then uh, you have to come all the way to the Pokemon League. So up here at the very top of the stairs is the only bathroom with six toilets, three on each side, uh, not separated into boys and girls, no urinals, and no other door, just one simple doorway in. Could have been a wall here, could have been separated into boys and girls, but it's not. It's all one big bathroom in Kanto. That's how they do it. They don't care. Uh, not to say that this bathroom doesn't look nice or whatever. These toilets look pretty legit and uh, and whatever. The thing is, is they look extremely out of place and just stupid, just extremely stupid. Because <clears throat> they're the only toilets in the game. There are no other toilets anywhere else in all of Kanto. I mean, I've been in every building. I've walked through every gym. I've went through every cave. I've done everything and battled every person all the way up until the Elite Four. Every single thing we can do, I've done. And these are the only toilets I've seen. So really weird and really out of place. And our location for where we are going to be talking about our team. <clears throat> so first up, we are going to talk about Charizard. Well, we'll get the Charizard here in just a second. I wonder if I can... Nope, I can't stack. Uh, that, too bad. Anyways, <clears throat> so this team was picked by me um, based off of some criteria that I had made in a previous game when I played uh, a lot of Pokey ROMs. Because I would play Pokemon ROMs nonstop, and uh, I played through like every single custom ROM I could find um, a few years ago. Because I was really into playing Pokemon ROMs, and also I was allowed to bring my computer to work and play them, so that made a big difference. <clears throat> um, but anyways, after a while of playing so much Pokemon, using the same team and stuff like that, you, you get bored, so you want to switch it up. So I just made some simple rules, and the rules were that, you know, we had to have a starter in our team, uh, we had to have an evolution in our team, and... Um, you know, like, like I needed a flying Pokemon and a water Pokemon, stuff like that. Like, you had to have something to use the HMs, obviously. Um, but I didn't want to teach any HMs to my, my Charizard. I don't like teaching, I don't like using HMs, period. I hate HMs. Um, I know a lot of people don't like HMs, which is why I really love when you get a, a, um, <clears throat> a hacked ROM that has, like, tools instead of HMs. It makes it so much easier. But anyways, out of all my Pokemon, I don't like it when my starter learns HMs, because I want my starter to be the coolest one. He's the one you started with, he's probably the one you train the most, and in this case, as in most cases, he is also usually your highest one, because, you know, you've used him more than anything else. <clears throat> but anyways, that being said, we are going to go through the Pokemon that we chose for our team, and, and we'll go through it the smart way first. So, first up, we have Charizard, who has made it to level 60 out of a total level... Everything's max level right now. can only go up to 72 because that's where my trainer level is. My trainer level will not be getting any higher. We are going to be doing the Elite Four after, um, <clears throat> you know, tomorrow when we get on the next video. But anyways, <clears throat> so he's a fire slash flying type, which means that he is strong against grass, ice, bug, and steel. And the flying gives him an extra advantage against grass flying and, uh, and bu uh, grass fighting and bugs. So, nothing too special, obviously, double bug, double grass there, but the uh, fighting aspect does give him uh, an advantage against fighting-type Pokemon. So we're going to go to Pidgeot, Pidgeot, I mean, I almost said Pidgeotto. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I have Pidgeot because it's one of the earliest Pokemon you can get, therefore it can be leveled up alongside of your starter Pokemon, which is why I think it's a good choice. Um, obviously, it being a normal type is a huge disadvantage, but I'm okay with that. 
out of all the birds and stuff in, in Kanto region, Pidgeot is my favorite, and so that's why I chose to go with him, other than the fact that it's an early advantage to have two Pokemon on your team right off the bat. So since he's a normal type, he's not really effective against anything, but ghost attacks can't hurt him, which is, you know, a big advantage for him. One of the it's well, it's literally the only advantage a normal type has. So, but with him being a flying, he also is effective against grass fighting and bug. And then we have our Hitmonlee, which I chose Hitmonlee because you know, um, part of my rules and stuff was like, either you need to have a fighting Pokemon or a rock Pokemon or a ground Pokemon, somewhere in that same kind of category of stuff. And so I choose Hitmonlee because he's my favorite out of probably every fighting Pokemon. He's been one of my favorite Pokemon for a long time. I really like him even in the mangas. So, um, you know, so I chose Hitmonlee. And since he's a fighting type, he's strong against normal type. He's strong against ice, rock, dark, and steel. Um, so that makes him very useful. He actually has quite a bit of usefulness. Um, and then we have our Gold Duck. And Gold Duck is a little bit disappointing because it's only strong against, you know, fire, ground, and rock. But since it's a Gold Duck, you know, I, I chose this Pokemon because he also can learn Psychic type moves, which opens up a lot of possibilities to other Pokemon that are weak against Psychic types. So, you know, his moves right now, he has a Psychic move, literally Psychic. Um, I need to teach him confusion and stuff like that, but he has good moves, um, so he can he can be used in more ways than one. Depending on how you you give these guys moves, they can be very very useful. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about Scyther. Okay, so Scyther is a bug slash fighting type. He's only really good against Grass, Psychic, and Dark, and then the fighting moves are gonna be good against Grass, Fighting, and Bug, which means Grass gets kind of thrown on there twice. Now, obviously, Scyther is a good choice for, you know, when you want to go get your Marsh Badge and whatnot, and, and for a few other things. I mean, I run across Psychic-type Pokemon here and there. I run across a lot of Grass-type Pokemon, so he has his uses. The reason I like Scyther the most, though, um, and the reason he's part of my team is because he's like the ultimate underdog of all of Kanto. In the original games, if I'm not mistaken, he is the single worst Pokemon, like as far as type advantages go. Like, he literally has more weaknesses than anything else because bug and fighting and flying are like the two most disadvantaged types, especially in Gen 1, you know, which is where this team originates from. Um, but, so everyone loves a good underdog story. So that's why. It plus, I mean, he's freaking cool looking. He's got two giant sword arms, okay? When Pokemon came out, I was a little kid, a really little kid. So what little kid doesn't like a Pokemon that has two giant swords for arms? So, you know, there you go. And then Jolteon. Now, Jolteon does have, you know, the, the smallest amount out of everyone. Actually, less type advantage even than Scyther, because he's simply an Electro-type Pokemon, which means he's only good against Water and uh, Flying-type. But he knows other moves. Learning other moves can give you a huge type advantage, you know, over other Pokemon. So... Out of all the types of Pokemon, my team, just as a normal type advantage, if they only knew moves based on what type they were, we're, we're good against normal, fire, water, electric, grass, ice, fighting, poison, ground, fighting, um, psychic type Pokemon, uh, bugs, rocks, dark, and steel. There are only 18 types of Pokemon, and we have a type advantage to 15 of them. We are only weak against three kinds of Pokemon, Fairy, Ghosts, and Dragons. Now, Charizard knows some dragon attacks, therefore he's going to be strong against other dragons because dragons are weak to dragon attacks, which is kind of funny, but whatevs. Um, as well as just Ghosts in general, obviously elemental attacks are good enough to do damage to them and going to kill them. And as far as fairies go, I really haven't had any problems with them. I'm not 100% sure what was the type advantage that was best for fairies. But either way, I'm sure I have a move for it because I know I one-shot fairies all the time. So, you know, there you go. There's a, the more sciency, mathematical version for why I chose the team I chose. In all actuality, though, that's just numbers that doesn't really mean anything to me. Um, if you guys have watched some of my Minecraft videos or have seen live streams, some of you guys know that I get very technical, very mathematical. You know, I, I have a notebook 
for my my crazy builds, especially in my solo world, like my entire underwater uh, village. I literally drew, you know wrote that out, like math that out, and and try to figure out how I could circular these domes and and what space I need and stuff. And so sometimes I do get kind of scientificy in order to um, to make something, but when it comes to Pokemon, it's a childhood love, like a childhood passion, and something I don't want to, like, to taint and ruin. So I don't want to get really sciencey with it. I don't actually care. I made this team with a very, very, very low amount of restrictions. Very low thought from a scientific point of view or, like, from a math point of view. I chose a starter Pokemon. Obviously, I chose my favorite starter Pokemon. I chose my favorite bird, my favorite fighting type. I have Golduck because when I was a kid, I had some the Pokemon figures, and there was a point in my life where I had a toy of Golduck and a toy of Charizard, and this is when the idea of double duels were new, and me and my friends would pretend we were going to do double duels, and my team was always my Golduck guy and my Charizard guy, because I, you know, I was a little kid, so whatever. And I, and I don't know why, I just thought Golduck was cool looking. So, you know... Whatever. So that's why I picked Golduck. The same thing with Scyther. I chose Scyther because I think Scyther, you know, I think that he's cool. Obviously, you know, there are some pretty cool appearances of Scyther in the early anime. Especially like the old Scyther on the Orange, uh, the Orange Island stuff. You know, that's kind of cool seeing like an old, you know, hardcore Scyther. Jolteon I chose because I thought an EV evolution was a good idea for a team. And it was a way to get a free Pokemon, and I just thought a lot of people like Eevee. Now, obviously, I would have chose Flareon, because I think Flareon is my favorite of the Eevee evolutions. It's a giant, fluffy, freaking... I don't even know what Eevee's supposed to be. I don't think it's a dog. <laughs> so, whatever. Jolteon is, is not my favorite, but I chose Jolteon because I thought Jolteon would make a good addition to the team, because you don't want to have a duplicate fire. And so, whatevs. Oh, did that game really just kick me out? We, all, we were inactive for too long. That sucks, because now I'm going to have to restart my two-hour timer here. Which means I'm not actually going to do that. Anyways, so that's the reason that I chose the team. Um, I did want to talk about just a couple other things. Uh, I was able to uh, get uh, Zapdos to show up. I did not catch Zapdos. I accidentally killed Zapdos. Um, on my last hit was a critical, and it just knocked it out, and I was so upset. But... Uh, from looking through Discord and stuff, I found out that all legendary Pokemon, whether you catch them or beat them, respawn again in a week. It's just, this whole game has got a lot of mechanics to make you want to come back and play again so they can try to get more money from you. And so there's a lot of people that are always uh, selling legendary Pokemon, and I'm always thinking, like, you know, why do you want to sell that? Well, the reason why is because in one week time, they'll have another one, so it doesn't really matter. Alright, so we are down to $28,000 from like $300,000. Now I have been getting into the market of the buying and selling and all that and I did make some good money for a while there but then I ended up blowing it all because we now have 52 rare candies. I paid between 4000 and 5000 in-game money for these. Um, I did learn that you cannot buy and sell and trade or whatever everything. Anything that costs gold cannot be bought sold trade. Um, costumes and all that, you know, are all out, which is unfortunate because I probably would have paid a bunch of money just to get the Pokemon League hat because I would have really liked to have beaten the Pokemon League with that hat on, but that's all right. It is what it is. We have 52 candies. I did attempt to go into the Pokemon League. I knew I would lose. I just wanted to see how bad, and I was able to get through the first two of them with the team we have now, but these 52 rare candies are for our current team, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and level them up the rest of the way, because you can see that would be a waste of a rare candy for most of these Pokemon. So I am going to level them all up one more level, and then with 52 candies, um, we'll see. I might get Charizard to like 70, 65, uh, at least 60, you know, 60, and that right there is around probably 40 of them or whatever, and then divide the other two between the week or two. So that's going to do it for this episode, guys. As always, if you liked the video... Um, you know, leave it a thumbs up, or if you just want to support me, leave it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or, like, your own opinion or your own team or why you play the way you play or whatever, anything that you guys want to tell me, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. And as always, if you're new to the channel and you want to check out more of this series or if you want to check out more Minecraft stuff, 
then go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next one.